We're going to restructure the function. That's uh, Jesse Williams at the BT Awards last night. What does that mean exactly? Restructure their function. How do we go about that? Is that is that violent? Oh, he's speaking violent? Restructure? What is what does he mean exactly? Restructure their function. Now, how are we gonna do that? Unless you hijack the system. How are we gonna do that when you got at least half of people who actually are registered to vote who don't show up at the polls? How can we apply what Jesse Williams said, and it was televised last night at the BET Awards, to Cincinnati? Uh, Not too long ago, in fact, about two weeks ago, we had a big black agenda meeting here, okay? A man by the name of Dwight Tillery, who I believe is like the CEO of the the Center for Closing the Health Gag. And again, they do great work. And he's a former mayor and I believe council member uh, of City of Cincinnati. And he put uh, some very concerned black people together. Michael Eric Dyson uh, delivered uh, over an hour of uh, sometimes it was a flow. Sometimes it was a sermon. Sometimes he was singing. Sometimes he was rapping. But I think he was uh, intended to motivate, to inspire. I'm not sure how inspiring it was. Or maybe it was very inspiring. I'm not sure. Then people broke out into workshops for many hours. And they're supposed to report back. So that black Cincinnati now will have an agenda. I was there for some time. I did not go to the workshops. But many of the members of my audience were there as well, many of them. And so how do we connect those two dots? Is there a connection? But again, enough of me. Uh, John Rice, the only reason I turned in because Facebook went crazy with reaction to Jesse Williams' speech. Great moment. Pat writes, I had a turtle when I was a child. We kept it in the basement. I would get any spiders in <laughs> it will get any spiders and the like, LOL. But see, I understand, Pat. Brent Rise, yeah, that turtle juice is wicked stank. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't happy. I had to, I had to, woosa, woosa. Again, if you come to the Ivy household for whatever reason, your pets must stay outside. They must stay, your cats, your dogs, your fish, your turtles. Uh, and then all the critters who may or may not be with you, uh, your bed bugs, uh, whatever else, uh, leave them outside uh, before you come in. That's the new rule. Uh, Rhonda Rice, good morning. Miss D Rice, greetings. Demi Rice, good morning. Mr. Every, great morning to you. Rashida Rice, Jesse Williams crushed it. Yes, they did. Yes, he did. It was great. I thought it was absolutely. It was a great speech. It's a great speech. Very inspiring. And it told me something about that brother that. Well, he thinks very deeply. He thinks very deeply. Camille writes a good morning, wonderful Cincinnati. Derek writes, good morning to the place where we keep it real at the chop shop. Crystal writes, wow, powerful. Angela writes a hey. Lakeisha writes, good morning. Good to have you. Um, Tracy writes, uh, I think you should have thrown the mic in the audience. Best acceptance speech ever. Angela writes, uh, I didn't watch, but saw lots of lots of posts about Jesse Williams. John writes, I don't trust anyone with blue eyes. <laughs> Is that right, John? <laughs> Pat writes, oh, no. Hashtag John. Uh, John. Gerald writes, good morning, Nathan. Good morning, Gerald. Pat writes, John, I don't trust many people with brown eyes. I'm just saying. Well, preach to him. Preach to him, Pat. Uh, Jericho writes, John have several seats, always one in a group. I'm just saying. (laughs) Ed writes, Nate, what's going on with Britain and why and why will its situations affect the United States? Well, we shall see. We shall see. The Brexit vote, which, again, I'm not here to tell you or to front to you uh, that I have all of the angles and a proper understanding of what's going on there. But I will. Let's allow the story to unfold a bit to see what's happening. But uh, volatility, uh, uncertainty is never good for the the world markets. No. You don't like volatility where you're investing your money, do you? Uh, We shall see. The European, could this be the end of the European Union? What will that mean for Europe? And then what will that mean for the rest of the world? We shall see. We shall see. Mike writes, uh, let me back up here. John writes, sorry, uh, didn't know who Jesse was, so I had to Google him. That dude looks like someone chiseled him from stone. Really? 
John, that wasn't the first thing I thought. Uh, that's not the first thing I thought. Chiseled him from stone? I'm not sure. I guess so. Uh, ladies, what do you think about Mr. Jesse Williams? And again, I hate to ask that. Well, not hate, but it's a very loaded question now that he just had this great moment. Okay. And he's got this love fest on. But again, it was a great moment. But ladies, what do you think? Mike writes, uh, Jesse Williams and Jennifer Hudson killed it. Really? What did Jennifer do? Uh, Brent writes, the brother touched on just about every platform that impacts our collective. Acknowledgement and respect for our women. He did. Religious dogma, right? And brutality, branding, getting money and giving nothing, criticizing those who are attempting to make a difference. A plethora of critical thought and a subtle challenge to those of us who know ourselves. Stand up and speak up. Yeah, it was great. It was. It, listen, leave it to Brent to drop a to to perfectly encapsulate, you know, uh, what Jesse did last night. But that's a great flow there, Brent. Absolutely, I agree. Karamir writes, in the early stages of the reggae industry, did you know that many songs were unfairly stolen from black performers and only to be given to white artists? If you look at current day practices, not much has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Because somebody many years ago came up with a great idea. We'll take black music. Okay. And we'll have white artists perform it. Wait a minute. We get the best of both worlds. Best of, the best of both worlds. Okay, we get the music that the youth really want to hear, and it can be performed by someone who looks like the parents of those youth want inside of their living rooms. Okay, will allow their children, right, to play those records, to buy those records. Oh, yeah, it looks like you. Elvis, uh, Eminem, Justin Timberlake. I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on and on. The list goes on and on and on. And so essentially what happens is they have they have everything but the burden. Everything but the burden. Dear writes, why has it took the Reds this long to induct him into their Hall of Fame? Question mark. Is it that they decided to do this because the Reds are mm, uh, ishy this year and they needed a weekend to sell out at home? Shaking my head. That's a good question, Daryl. I don't have the answer for it. I think may, maybe it's because, again, I can't even take a stab at it. It's hard to understand. I mean, maybe it's because... Uh, and it wasn't just it wasn't just Pete Rose. It was the entire what was it seventy six I believe baseball team, and it was that entire team because Red. I mean, listen, whatever. What do you think about Pete Rose? Pete Rose is is like a hot potato. He really is, and he did it to himself. He's got no one else to blame for him. Had Pete Rose come and clean came clean many years ago, would it stop lying about? blaming everybody else and coming up with conspiracy theories and all these wacky ideas. They just don't want Pete Rose to be in the Hall of Fame because they let all them rapists in the Hall of Fame. You know, I've heard those kind of ridiculous arguments. They just don't want Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame because he tried to buy NBC. You know, all this nonsense. So I'm not sure. Maybe they decided they wanted to subtly honor him by honoring the entire team. That way, you really can't criticize the move. Because it's not just about Pete Rose, it's about that entire team. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, is it beyond the folks at the Reds to try to pull this, to try to bring in some, uh, some, some put some butts in seats? I mean, you got to do what you got to do. If the Reds fans like it, it's all good. It ain't illegal. Ms. D writes, uh, Streets of Compton, and she got the finger going straight up. Okay, I'm not alone. You're watching it too. It is good. It is good. Rhonda writes, please don't forget to hit the like button. I ran into Black Lion on Friday. I told him to check out the program and join us in the chop shop. Rhonda, why did you do that? Why did you do that? You know that brother going to come in here and try to wreck shop? And then, as always, I'm going to have to lasso the, the beast. What is the, what's the, the phrase? I, oh, yeah, lion tame. No, no, no. BL's good people. He crazy as hell, but he's good people. And he's always welcome. You listening, Black Lion? Join us, bro. Join us. Jericho writes to Ed Brent, I agree with you. And he used his platform to reach out to the masses, and it was live. And his words were chosen very carefully. Very carefully. Again, one phrase steps out to me when he said, uh, then we're going to restructure it. Restructure? What you mean? What? How do you restructure because, see, restructure means we're going to build a new structure, but it doesn't give off a connotation of any kind of violence. 
is damn near corporate, right? We're going to restructure. Tiffany writes, morning, I'm late. Checking in, we'll listen in the replay. Glad to have you, Tiffany. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Debbie writes, I thought the entire BT show was good, but Jesse William was completely on point. I agree completely. He was on point. He was on point. Uh, T-Bone writes, honor this foul bait ball player and have a homosexual weekend. Cincinnati has gone to hell. Homosexual weekend? Uh, my uncle, and I think he's about to get hooked up driving Uber. He might have been on a, on a run. I'm not sure. My uncle calls me yesterday, no, Saturday. He's like, oh, man, I'm over in Northside, all this traffic. I'm like, hey, Unc, you got the Gay Pride Festival this weekend. Perhaps that's what it is. I did not attend, but I wish everyone well. And um, and and I've got no problem with those kind of events. I don't think it's a sign of the devil or anything like that. It's merely what they stated to be. It's about pride. And after what happened in Orlando, uh, homosexuals are uniting. They're saying, look, we're not going to hide. We're not going to stop being who we are. We're going to be ourselves, and we're going to show some pride. And I don't have a problem with it whatsoever. Again, gay rights in the new millennium and civil rights are very same thing. You know, the struggles that homosexuals have been having over the last 20 years can only be described as civil rights struggles in many cases. Civil rights, the right to get married, the right to have benefits, the right to have your name on, you know, you know, death benefits. I mean, these are all basic things that heterosexuals just don't even think about. You take it for granted. It's a civil right. And it should always remain that way, in my humble opinion. Um, uh, but uh, good to see you, T-Bone, nonetheless. Ed Wright, what episode is it for Streets of Compton? I watched the first episode. I'm not sure which one they're on. Maybe two or three. Craig writes, uh, here after hustle, right. What did Pac say? Is God just another cop waiting to beat my ass if I don't go pop? Well, that's the way some people portray God. He's a jealous God. He's a vengeful God. He's a God of love, but hey, he'll strike you down. Wait a minute. Jekka writes, I love a conscious black man. I think I said it the way you meant it, Jerrica. Kruther writes, I agree, Jerrica, 100%. Really? Deborah writes, the Today Show is showing Jesse Williams' acceptance speech on TV right now. That was at 7.51 a.m. <laughs> yeah, keep your bed books outside, Krutha. I don't want them. I don't want them. And you don't want to get them. The nigga writes, I love Jesse Williams. He's a very conscious brother. Jesse writes, sorry, but Jesse has not told us anything new. The shame behind a great speech is we should already know this. He's very right. Very right, but sometimes it's the role of the mind, uh, the role of the creative and the conscious to remind us. Jay writes, that's what art is. Jay writes, morning, everyone. I so agree with you, Nate. Hell with them pets. I'd rather spend that money on my kids. Absolutely right, Jay. I just don't get some folks, man. I could spend the next 30 minutes talking about my issues with animals, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like that. I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Ms. D. Rice, Sam Jackson referred to Jesse Williams as an activist. Jennifer Hudson would also great. Was she? What did Jennifer Hudson do? I missed it. As I told you, I did not watch all of the BET Awards. You telling me I got to still do that? No, man. I sat this one out. I'm sorry. I pretty much know what's going to happen. Future's going to be there. I mean, he's at every award. He's at every BET Awards show. Uh, Anthony Anderson or Sean Wayans or... Uh, Whoopi Gold, but not Whoopi Goldberg. There, there would be maybe Chris Rock. Maybe does Chris Rock and Kevin Hart ever hosted the BT Awards? I don't know. Sam Jackson may. Speaking of Sam Jackson, I'm mad at Sam Jackson. Would you like to know why? I am super mad at Sam Jackson. In fact, I, there's a part of me that wants to nominate him for the Gilligan of the Day Award. Uh, the fine producers and the movie makers of your new movie called uh, Tarzan. 